there is a lot of concerns with super intelligent systems, with very capable systems. When you, I think when I, when you hear the word super intelligent, you're hearing like it's smarter than humans in every way that humans are smart. But the paperclip manufacturing system doesn't need to be smart in every way. It just needs to be smart in a set of specific ways. And the more uh, capable the AI systems become, the more you could see us giving them control over, like I said, our power grid, a lot of aspects of human life. And then that means they will be able to do more and more damage when there's unintended consequences that come to life. I, yeah. I think that that's right. The, the unintended consequences we have to think about, and I'm, that I fully, I fully agree with. But let's go back a bit. Sentient, I mean, I'm, again, I'm far away from my comfort zone and all this stuff, but hey, let's talk about it because well, I, I give myself a qualification. And, yeah, we're both qualified and sentient, I think, Yeah, so as, as much as anyone else. I think the paperclip scenario is a, just such a poor one because let's think about how that would happen. Um, and also, let's think about we are being so um, unrealistic about how much of the Earth's surface we have commandeered. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for paper clip manufacturing to really happen, I mean, do the math. It's like, it's, it's not going to happen. There's not enough energy. There's not enough resource. Where is it all going to come from? I think that what happens in evolution is really, it, why is... Why has a killer virus not killed out all of not killed all life on Earth? Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is, sure, super killer viruses that kill the ribosome have emerged. But you know what happens? They nuke a small space mm -hmm. because they can't propagate. Mm -hmm. They all die. So there's this interplay between evolution and propagation, right, and death. And so in evolution, it, it, you don't it, think it's possible to engineer, for example, sorry to interrupt, but like a perfect virus, no, that's deadly enough, no, like nonsensical. I think that just wouldn't, again, it wouldn't work. So it was too deadly. It would just kill the radius and not replicate. Yeah. I mean, but you don't think it's possible to get a... You're, I mean, if you were super... I mean, I, if you were... it, it Not kill all of life on Earth, but kill all humans. There's not many of us. There's only like 8 billion. There's, there's so much more ants. I mean, I don't... I So many more ants. <laughs> and I, they're pretty smart. I think we the nice thing about what we're where we are, I would love for the AI crowd to take a leaf out of the book of the bio warfare, chemical warfare crowd. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, not love, because actually people have been killed with chemical weapons in the first and second world war, and people and bioweapons have been made, and you know, we can argue about COVID nineteen and all this stuff. Let's not go there just now. But I think there is a consensus that some certain things are bad and we shouldn't do them, right? And um, and sure, it would be possible for a bad actor to to engineer something bad, but the the damage would be we would see it coming, mm -hmm. and we would be able to do something about it. Um, now, I I guess what I'm trying to say is when people talk about doom, and they just when you ask them for the mechanism, they just say. Um, you know, they just make something up. I'm, I mean, in this case, I'm with Yann LeCun. I think he put out a very good point about trying to regulate jet engines before we've even invented them. Yeah. And I think that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying we should, I just don't understand why these guys are going around making, literally making stuff up about us all dying. Yeah. When basically we need to actually really focus on. Now, let's say there's some actors are earnest, mm -hmm. right? Let's say Yudakowski is being earnest, right? And he really cares, but in the, but he loves it. It goes, duh, 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 and then you're all going to die. Yeah. It's like you know, why don't we try and do the same thing? And say you could do this, and then you're going to be happy forever after. Yeah, you know. Well, I I think uh, there's several things to say there. Uh, one, I think there is a role in society for people that say we're all going to die, because I think uh, it filters through as a message, as a viral message, that gives us the proper amount of uh, concern. Okay, so, all right. Meaning not the. It's not 95%, but when you say 95% and it filters through society, it'll give an average of like a 0.03%, an average. So it's nice to have people that are like, we're all going to die, then we'll have a proper concern. Like, for you, example, <laughs> I do believe we're not properly concerned about the threat of nuclear weapons currently. Like, that, that it just seems like people have forgotten that that's a thing. And, you know, there's a war in Ukraine with the, nuclear power involved there's nuclear power throughout the world and it just feels like we're on the brink of a potential world war 
to a percentage that I don't think people are properly calibrating, like in their head. We're all thinking it's a Twitter battle as opposed to like actual threat. So like, it's nice to have that kind of level of concern. But to me, like what I when I hear AI doomers, what I'm imagining is with un unintended consequences, a potential situation where, uh, let's say 5% of the world suffers deeply because of a mistake made of unintended consequences. I don't imagine the entirety of human civilization dying, but there's could be a lot of suffering if this is done poorly. I, I understand that. And I'm I kind of I guess I mean I'm involved in the whole hype cycle. Like why what I would like us to I don't want us to so what's happening right now is there seems to be so let me let's say having some people saying AI AI doom is a worry. Fine, let's give them that. But it, what seems to be happening is there seems to be people who don't think AI is doing, they're trying to use that to control regulation and to push sure. people to regulate where which which stops humans generating knowledge. Yep. And I am an advocate for generating as much knowledge as possible. Mm -hmm. When it comes to nuclear weapons, I grew up in the 70s and 80s where the where nuclear doom, every, or, a lot of adults were really had existential threat, mm -hmm. almost as bad as now with AI doom. They were really worried, right? There was some great, well, not great, there were some hor horrific documentaries. I think there was one called Freds that was generated in the UK, which was, was like, it was terrible. It was like so scary. Um, and I think that the correct thing to do is obviously get rid of nuclear weapons, but let's think about unintended consequences. We've got rid of this is such a non sequitur. We got rid of all the sulfur particles in the atmosphere, right? All the all the soot. Mm -hmm. And what's happened in the last couple of years is global warming has accelerated because we've cleaned up the atmosphere too much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> sure, I mean the same thing. If you get rid of nuclear weapons, you're gonna I, exactly. That's my point. Is so if, if so, what we could do is if we actually started to put the AI in charge, which is I really like an AI to be in charge of all world politics. And this sounds ridiculous for a second. Hang on. But if we could all agree on the, the AI doomers just woke up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That statement. But I really don't like politicians who are basically just looking at lo local sampling. But if you could say globally, look, here's some game theory here. There's how, what is the minimum number of nuclear weapons we need to distribute around the, the world to everybody? to basically re re reduce war to zero. I mean, just the start experiment of the United States and China and Russia and major nuclear powers get together and say, all right, we're gonna distribute nuclear weapons to, everybody. to every single nation on earth. Yep. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, that has a g probably greater than 50% chance of eliminating major military conflict. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not a hundred percent. But it, but I don't think anyone will use them because I think I think. And look, what you've got to try and do is like for to qualify for these nuclear weapons. <laughs> I can't, this is a great idea. The game theorists could do this, right? Uh -huh. I think the question is this. I I really buy your question. We have too many nukes. Um, yeah. from just from a feeling point of view that we've got too many of them. So let's reduce the number, but not get rid of them because we'll have too much conventional warfare. So then. What is the minimum number of nuclear weapons we can distribute around to, to remove what hum, humans hurting each other is something we should stop doing. It's in, it's not out with our, our conceptual capability. But right now, what about the nations, certain nations that are being um, exploited for their natural resources in the future because for a short term gain, because we don't want to generate knowledge. And, and so if everybody had an equal doomsday switch, mm -hmm. I, I predict the quality of life of your average human will go up faster. I am an optimist and I believe that humanity is going to get better and better and better, that we're going to eliminate more problems. Um, but I think, yeah. That's the but uh, the probability of a bad actor of one of the nations setting off a nuclear weapon Mm. I mean, you have to you have to integrate that into the. But we we get we distribute the nuke atmosphere. nukes like population, right? Uh -huh. We give what we do is we. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's just, just go there. Yeah. Let's say so if a, if a small nation with a couple of nukes uses one because they're a bit bored or annoyed, they're gonna they the likelihood that they are going to be pummeled out of existence immediately is one hundred percent. And yet they've only they've only nuked one other city. I know this is crazy, and I apologize for. Well, no, no. I think this, just to be clear, we're just having a thought experiment. That's interesting, but you know, there's terrorist organizations that 
would take that would take would take that trade yeah i and mean that, look, that, I'm, I'm and not... we have to ask ourselves a question of how many which percentage of humans would be suicide bombers essentially where, where they would sacrifice their own life to to uh because they hate another group of people and that i believe it's a very small fraction but is it large enough to uh if you give out nuclear weapons I can predict a future where we take all nuclear material and we burn it for energy, right? As because we're, we're getting there. And the other thing you could do is say, look, there's a gap. So if we get all the countries to sign up to the virtual nuclear agreement where we all exist, we have a simulation yeah. where we can nuke each other in the simulation, and the and the economic consequences are catastrophic. Sure. In the simulation, I love it. It's not going to kill all humans. It's just going to have economic consequences. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I just made it up. It seems like no. A cool it's interesting. Idea. I mean, it's, but it's interesting whether that would have as much power on human psychology as actual physical nuclear. I think explosion. so. It's because possible, but people don't take economic consequences as seriously. I think as actual nuclear weapons. I think they explode. do in Argentina, sure. and they do in Somalia, and they do in a lot of these places where. No, I. I think this is a great idea. I'm a strong advocate now for, so what have we come up with? Burning burning all the nuclear material to have energy. Mm -hmm. And before we do that, because MAD is good, mutually assured destruction is very powerful. Let's take it into the metaverse mm -hmm. and then get people to kind of um, uh, subscribe to that. And if they actually nuke each other, even for fun in the metaverse, there are mm -hmm. dire consequences. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a video game. We all have to join this metaverse video game. Yeah. <laughs> I can't and then believe it. Dire just... economic consequences. We're... I don't know how, and uh, it's all run by AI, as you mentioned. Which, so the AI doomers is, are really terrified at this point. No, I mean, they're happy. They have a job for another twenty years, right? Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> fear mongering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. I'm a believer in equal employment.